Hello again and welcome to Ndu Dubai Fafa. Hello everyone, my name is Fafa Gilbert and welcome to Ndu Dubai Fafa. But it's not any other food, it's that Ndu twist. It's why I explore new flavors by use of spices and herbs and I infuse it. And I'll tell you what, I love it. Do you? <laughs> hey, so today me, hmm, I'm going to make some banku, but not as you know it. Now, how this recipe even started? It started because I did not have the traditional ingredients, but I had components of it. So usually to make the banku, you would need your fermented corn dough, as well as your fermented cassava dough. So, okay, that's not happening. These are the perils of, you know, living in the diaspora, I guess. Um, but I did have some cornmeal. Um, I think the brand is Pam. And I had some garlic. Which, in actual fact, is cassava. Or you can, may I say? So, to my saucepan, I did measure equal amounts of both the cornmeal and the gari. And to that, I'm adding some water and I'm going to mix this together. So it's well combined, as I always say, absolutely. <laughs> now, the reason why I'm mixing it with water, and I'm going to leave it to sit for at least about 10, 15 minutes, because of course the gari is like in the granule form and I want it to melt, as well as the cornmeal. So I'm just soaking this, just to allow these two beauties to get married perfectly. This is not like a flavor flavor thing, but it's a, it's a technically texturized idiame. Maybe I'm to from the corner in there. <laughs> then again, I'm not surprised I'm lost for words. Considering I've been up at 4.30 a.m., I've got my cup of coffee here, and I'm trying to do this voiceover. So do bear with me. <laughs> so now I've got my mixture, and I've placed it in my saucepan, and I've placed it on a medium heat. I'm adding a little bit of water to allow it to be pliable, just you know, for an easy stir, may I say. And gradually, this is gonna heat up, and I'm gonna end up with this beautiful, soft, pliable texture, which Banco Aquila, um, is synonymous too. Then again, this has a similarity with the Zimbabwean satsa, of course, without the gari, um, which is also similar to the Erez um, Awokula, which is also made of the cornmeal. So there are similar cultural influences across the continent, and I do love this, you know. I'm sitting in my kitchen, I want to have some banku, and I've got limited um, ingredients, so I make the most of what I do have. So here, I told you to see, look, look how pliable and beautiful this is. Chale. <laughs> so I mean, this process so far has taken about 15 to 17 minutes. And it's just, you know, me just stirring this and it's cooking slowly and the heat is gradual. So yes, it means that every grain, everything actually just cooks and it melts beautifully. So that was the whole point of soaking it and also cooking it slowly. So you end up with this beautiful, pliable, soft and silky texture. Just like I like it. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to steam this beauty. So I'm adding a little bit of water to encourage the steam. And I'm going to turn everything around. So the parts that's in the bottom come to the top and that at the top will go to the bottom. This is to allow an even cook as well. Um, yeah, so that's like, there's that constant stir. Now, the reason why you do add the water, don't mix it entirely because they end up with a mashy texture. That's not what you want. You want the water to steam the mixture and you want it to be silky. You want it to have that texture. You want it to be smooth and just beautiful. Mm, so. <laughs> so steam this for about seven to eight minutes on a very low heat at this point. And then I think I'm almost done. Look at that. Look at that. Mm, this is not any other food. Mm, I'm just saying that, yeah, look, it's nice. It's soft. Look at that texture. It's just like it's almost fluffy. You can see it's almost done. 
Now, if you watch my two most recent previous videos, you notice that I did the grilled lamb cutlets and also the interview with Tina Tiemo because we had this banco with the raw pepper and the grilled lamb. So you can see where this is going as part of the sequence. So yes, my mixture is ready. I've got my calabash and I've got my little cutter, which are traditional utensils that we do use in Ghana. So usually you would dip the cutter into a bit of water and then you'd take a portion of your pliable mixture, dip a little bit of water as well into the calabash and then you mold it into a beautiful round shape. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And the rounder it is, the better it is and the more appetizing it becomes. But you know, you can see what I've done here. It's just too much in our small calabash. But hey, look, they were just screaming that they were hungry. So I had to shabu shabu do this, put it in a pot. And yes, Tina and I <laughs> enjoyed it directly from the pot. There was no kache or any shenanigans about this. It was just funny. So we enjoyed this with a smoky raw pepper, or may I say the spicy Ghanaian salsa, which is just incredible. I'll leave a link at the top so you can watch the previous video that has this recipe. It's a must try recipe. As I always say, it's all about the natural flavors and hands and the natural flavors as you do. You see, and I just love this bonding session. You know, I put the meat in, and then she puts the sauce in, and then you know, I add some onions, doing my shenanigans. You know, and look at this P.S. There is a stones. Is this not appetizing? Ah, but you see, <laughs> I am so grateful that you guys did watch uh, my informal conversation with Tina. She is definitely an incredible lady, and. Thank you for your encouraging words and your beautiful comments. Yes, definitely, she's a gem. And I can't wait for her new collection to come through as well. We did have loads of fun, actually, filming this video. It was incredible. Now, the next interview is with and another incredible lady uh, by name of Sadia Sanusi. So you know when I wear my whole African prints with my slits and kappa and all those shenanigans and if you've been watching my cookery show on ABN TV, you would see the designs and styles and stuff like that, yes. Sadia Sanusi, she is the designer and I will be talking to her and of course it's gonna be around food. It has to be, you know. <laughs> But yes, don't miss the series, um, Hidden Gems. You never know. It might be you next that will be calling over to have dinner with me. Or, you know, to have some fun with me. You never, ever know. So yes, keep on leaving your comments and make sure you glue to this. And binge watch all the recipes and do try them. Be encouraged to try these recipes. Let me hear from you. I mean, I do read some comments and they're so encouraging. It's... And sometimes someone goes like, oh, my wife is surprised that I've become a better cook. And like, she wonders where I learned it. And it's so appreciative. And I love it. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Now, as usual, I will leave the transcript of this recipe, including the list of ingredients on my blog in dudubyfafa.blogspot.com. So do check it out. Yes. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope I have given you a reason to subscribe. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as in Dudu by Fafa. So you know the drill. Now, as I always say, be nice, be beautiful, be gorgeous, love yourself. Don't change for anybody. Just be a better version of yourself each day. Because when you are, you do attract that goodness and beauty around you. And also pray for wisdom so you make the right decisions. And yes... Until next time, take care of you, be you, be nice, be beautiful, and I love you. And thank you for your support. Much love.